Today's video was made in support of World Bicycle Relief. All proceeds will help to provide specially designed locally assembled bicycles to students in rural Africa, connecting them with education, healthcare and economic opportunities. You can find more information on the cause and how you can help the cause in the video description. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020. My name is Benji and today we're starting the second monument of 2020 in Lombardia. To me, Lombardia has always been a tiny bit underrated in the sense that it's one of the monuments and I feel like if I asked half of the Belgians on the street whether they knew this race and knew who won last year, they wouldn't have a clue. Because Paris-Roubaix, Tour of Flanders, all the big races, while in Lombardia is technically on the same level, it's also a monument and it is definitely one of the older ones as well. As an addition, the Civigo climb is obviously one of the key factors of the race, but also the descent and... I've always really liked descenders in cycling and the technique that goes with it. And in 2015, even though I already love Vincenzo Nibali a lot when it comes to being a hardcore fan of him, I certainly doubled down on that when I saw his descent of the Siviglio because that was honestly the best piece of descending I've ever seen in cycling so far in my life. So yeah, that was amazing. Anyway, today we're not going to be riding with Vincenzo Nibali. I know, I know, it's sad, don't worry, I'm sad as well, but I'm also happy because I get to ride with Remco Evenepoel this time around. You have voted for the Koenig with a whopping 53% of the votes, kind of insane, but I wonder why. At Remco Evenepoel, I did decide to adapt the database that I'm using a bit to make these stats a bit more realistic with the current moment of cycling, because Evenepoel is obviously better than 74 Mountain at this point, so I upped it to 77. Also leveled out his hill a bit to make that more realistic, also an upgrade of Almeida and Bagioli. So you might say I made the Koenig in general a bit more stronger, but I also did so with the other riders like Roglic and such that are behaving well in real life at this very moment. The race in real life is apparently a bit shorter thanks to Corona because they skip out on a city or two, but it's not too big of a deal because it's really in between two climbs on a plateau section, so in game it shouldn't matter too much. There's a lot of competitors at the start. I dare to say the main ones are Nibali, Bennett, Fulsang, Betio maybe, maybe Woods, maybe Carapaz, potentially a Moscon, but I don't think he's going to make it right here. And then I'd also, I just skipped the page and I skipped the page again. There we go. We can finally see it. Ulisi maybe. I don't know. He's pretty good at Gran Piemonte. Sharkman's pretty good. Micah, I don't know if this parkour really fits him to be honest. Outside of these guys, Van der Poel doesn't seem to be in a great shape in general, so I don't believe in him for this race at least. And that's roughly about it, honestly. There's not too many big guns, and all because of the fact that Dauphiné is happening. Next to Nibali, they've also got Mollema, of course, the last year's winner at Trek Segafredo. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes it once again. He's in good form. We saw that at Tudelin, and I certainly believe that he can do it again this year, but. Yeah, all the cards need to fall in the right place. When it comes to Evenepoel, in real life he is a favorite. In game it's gonna be pretty tough to win, but I'm gonna do my best. I do believe that in real life the media is blowing it up a bit too much in the sense that they are basically calling him a winner before the race is even ridden. And I don't know if that's just Belgium or something, but I don't like that. I feel like the race still has to be ridden and they can't just call someone a extreme favorite that will take it so easily because that's basically how they're writing their articles right now. And I believe that everybody's got a chance when the race starts. And despite that, I am a Evenepoel fan because I'm Belgian. And obviously I'm also an Ibali fan for this. So I'd be happy with either of the two winning. I'd generally be happy with most of the people in this peloton winning because I'm not that hardcore of a fanatic as long as the race is good. Anyway, sorry for the rant there. Let us dive into this race. We've got a solid team around Evenepoel. So I believe that we can actually do something. but. Winning's gonna be tough, but I'm going to do my best. Let's go. Here we go, Ilombardia has begun and we've got a pretty good day on our lads. We've got Evenepoel with a plus two on the day, which means we've got 80 Mountain, 78 Hill, and most importantly, a high stamina with 79 and also 83 resistance. And that resistance will matter a lot on climbs like the Siviglio and such. So I'm very happy about that. A plus two on Almeida as well. Joao is looking fine today with 78 Mountain and 78 Hill. And the secondaries as well looking great. When it comes to the rest of the squad, we've got pretty good on Honore and Seri. David Ayans being average on the day. 
but Bagioli and Catanay are not looking too bright on this very moment so I guess we'll have to find out if they are able to help at any point in the race in this future. Looks like the break is slowly but surely forming, seven people up front then some other people trying to bridge up but so far no clear breakaway ahead. Nonetheless it doesn't really matter for us anyway. We're going to be focusing on the Madonna del Gizalo and the Sormano after that. Those are going to be the first starters of the race. Sormano with that steep section is certainly going to be murderous. And I might honestly dare to attack on the Sormano already, but I guess I have to see if my energy allows that. The breakaway of the day has got Osio Gasparotto, we've got Bagioli, so potentially family of my Bagioli, I don't know that. If anybody can tell me that, that'd be great. Wolfsleben. Nekrasov, Zana, Firvake and Gaburo, they've got 2 minutes 30 on the peloton in which I'm trying to get water with the other Bagioli and that seems to be working. For the rest we're looking fine with our squad, not spending any energy, we've crossed 2 climbs already that didn't exactly do much but I wasn't expecting that either. I think we just have to be ready for the Madonna del Gizalo and also for the Sermano now. Oh my goodness, a very early move and I was not expecting that at all. Macho van der Poel and the Marquis and Patton and Hamilton have decided to attack. That is a very early attack of Macho van der Poel. Did not see that one coming at all and he's literally doing it before the Madonna del Gizalo is actually here. So I guess aggressive AI is going to make a move on the Gizalo or the climb after that. So I gotta make myself ready. I am ready I think so let's get this party started. Oof, I saw someone crash there. Do we care in the peloton? Everybody's riding over him. The sad lad. We're starting the climb. Madonna del Gizalo. We're a bit too far to the back to my liking. I had one job and I certainly did not do that right. Let's try and move up again slowly but surely without spending too much energy. That is kind of the plan right now. But we should be pretty fine in general. We are looking good with our squad. Dave and Anne's protecting Avenapool. We've got Honore protecting Almeida. Don't like the fact that Bagioli is dropping behind without doing anything. So if I could, if only protect Seri that he can be useful in the future, then that would be cool. Dave and I is really having trouble protecting. Spending so much energy, why is he pacing like that? The rider's behind you that you need to protect. Why is he moving up like that? He literally killed himself like that. Makes zero sense, honestly. Cataneo, why are you so far behind? I need you right now. That's not great. Let's put you on Evenepoel and then Almeida can be in the wheel of Evenepoel, I guess. Or I can still have Dave and Anne's protect Almeida for a bit. There we go. Evenepoel moving up nicely. Almeida not so much, but I've got a bit of time on top of this plateau for a second. So I'll try and use that to my advantage right here, right now. To have my positioning better a bit before we start the Sermano, which is honestly pretty damn soon. So... Let's get ourselves ready, let's try and get Cataneo to the front so that he can actually do something today. So at the moment it doesn't look like he will. Dave and will see his last moments happen on this climb. Evenepoel still looking nice. And Almeida, come on, move a bit more to the front, my man. We need you up there. We will certainly need him. And Seri is still looking pretty nice, so that's great. We've got attacks up front, or am I just blind? I think I'm just blind. They're just pacing like crazy with Conrad for Bora, so that is for their leader Sharkman most likely. Almeida got behind. I do not like that. Should not have happened. So let's try and focus on Evenepoel now, who's also caught behind. Damn it! This is not good. Let's try and switch that around to right there, and we should be able to come back with Seri's help quite easily in a second here. Once we hit the bottom of the Sermano, we should be in there. Will if I go 99 for a second hit? Yes, I'm in a bit of a panic mode right now because this is not supposed to be happening. And uh, yeah, let's try and avoid that. Let's try and move up to the left of the road and get past people here on the Sermano. And let us ride our own tempo on the climb because it's only 5 kilometers. So I can generally kind of start pacing like crazy with Evenepoel right now. There we go. Seri's done for. Let's push you to the right. And it's basically time for Almeida to go ahead and protect even if at all costs here. And we are again back in business. So made a small mistake, but we're correcting it. We certainly are. 
We are with the people that matter. And it looks like some people are looking at a potential move pretty soon. I think it's still a good 3 kilometers towards the top. Steepest section still coming, so I don't want to explode myself right here. But I would like to move up definitely on the steep section. I'm actually just going to do it, I think. Should I attack? Uh, I've got source up pacing a lot, so I don't feel like it. We've got Karapaz up there with Sosa protecting, I would say. Micah and the wheel, Magnus caught Nielsen. It looks like Isaac Gere is moving up on the left or doing something at least. We've got this really steep section right now. Spending a lot of energy at the moment. We're going into the fog. This is becoming very legendary to watch at least. Almeida, try and hold on, man. Try and hold on. Spending too much energy right now. We are generally spending too much energy. I don't believe I can attack right here. This section, look at it. So steep, man. Honestly. Let's go 80 again. We're almost at the top. Let's go 99 right here. Let's try and make sure we can follow that move of Sosa or something. Karapas is done for. Let's try and move 99 with Evenepoel. There we go. We've got a bit of a gap with six people. So let's try and work together with them into the downhill. Four people. Vincenzo Nibali, Shockman and Izagire. And Remco Evenepoel. I'm going to sit up a bit in their wheel because I believe that Full sun seems to be basic. It's not easy getting. Let's have him do that and let's try and benefit off of that with Evenepoel without dropping preferably. There we go. We are looking good, but we'll need to recover a lot in the downhill of this Sermano to be worth something on the Civiglio. It's kind of surprising that they are willing to pace next to the fact that I'm not doing anything. And in the group behind, we've got Sosa and Carapaz. So Sosa's pretty much going to bring back Carapaz. I'm pretty sure of that. Looks like Molima, Bennett, and Mike are left behind. He's a Gere and Betiol and such as well. So I think we're... Oh, we're losing ground. We're losing ground. Let's not have that happen in a downhill here. Let's try and sit up nice in the wheel without losing positions. Oh, God. Did we drop the wheel there? We did. And we're back. Okay, let's sit up again. And let's have them work a bit. The moment they decide they don't want to work again. Then I'm going to try and help a bit to try and stimulate them again. So let's hope we can do that. We've got six people and then a gap of 50 seconds. I'm seeing six because I really believe that Sosa is going to bring back Carapaz pretty easily here. And the domestique is done. Sosa is done for. We've got a crash in the back from Adam Hansen. And it looks like Carapaz is the first to throw in the towel when it comes to working together. The rest still seems to be working at a very slow pace, which is good because I need my energy. And I am kind of... Coming close to a full recovery here on this plateau before we start the Civiglio. So it's looking really good for us. So let's hope we can actually pull this off. Okay, here we go. Civiglio coming up. One, two, three. And there we go. Let's see if anybody decides. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Let's try and follow Carapaz. Might be a bad idea, to be honest. I should not be following them. I need to set my own tempo right now. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. I just have to. I kind of just have to. Let's try and hope this is a good idea. Let's go... 87 right now. I would not have been able to follow that pace for sure. So let us hope that this is a good decision. Karapa seems to be the first one throwing in the towel on the Civiglio. Trying to make my move up with Evenepoel right now. We've got a 35-37 gap towards the front of the race. 86. Come on, Evenepoel. Come on, Remco. You can do it. 85 are going to go past Karapas. Let's try and go on the left to make sure we don't get blocked by him. And it looks like Nibali's the next one to suffer. Or Shakman. I don't know. It's not too far to go with the Siviglio. So kind of got to, got to watch out that I can still move up. But I do believe that we can. Still got a small portion to go. Let's make sure we can survive till the top. Because that's going to be the key to being able to do something here. Let's go 99 for a second. Let's try and go 92. And let us try and move up again. We're going past Nibali, going past Sharkman. Only full sung ahead. Oh, it's going to be tough to close that down. It's going to be really tough. Let's try and work together with Sharkman. Full sung's got 40 seconds right now. Next up is San Fermo della Pataglia. So let's try and get back. Come on, Evenepoel. Come on, Sharkman. Let's try and do this together, but I'm afraid that full sung might actually have it. I think that Jakob full sung is currently winning in Lombardia. There we go, full sun starting the last climb. I don't have anything. I generally don't have anything. So if I pace any higher than 69 right now, I'm most likely not going to make it to the top. So let's try and keep up a tempo of 70. Let's see if that works out. But 
I think we were too explosive on the Sermano, maybe. But we did recover fully, so can't really be that. But it looks like we're not going to really make it unless we go 90 right now. But I think we're going to be fighting for a second position here. Not too much more than that. Full Sun clearly has a one minute gap, so I think I'm going to sit up in the wheel of Nibali and gonna try and beat him for second position here. Because the first position is gonna be for Jakob Full Sun, who will win Il Lombardia 2020 in Como. Let's try and get into the wheel of Nibali here. We've got a pretty shitty sprint, both of us, so guess I've got an opportunity here to try and beat the Shark himself on home territory in Italy. 1.5 kilometers to go. Let's try and sprint already because it's kind of downhill. Probably should have sprinted earlier because he's got a huge gap right now and I don't know why. Oh no, that was not one kilometer for us. That was one kilometer for Fulsang. I'm going to try and out sprint him right now, but it's going to be nearly getting second, I think. Yeah. Ah, man. Getting third on this one. Not a bad result, though. Fulsang taking home the victory. Nearly in second in the Demko Evenepoel. Third on Lombardia. Jakob Fulsang wins with 131 on the rest. What a gap. And he totally deserves it as well. Honestly, crazy gap by Fulsang. 131, man. Honestly. We did really well with the attack on Sermano, I think. Totally blew up the peloton. When it comes to Siviglio, maybe I should have followed their attack. I don't think I would have been able to. And I think that would have blown up in our faces anyway. So I think this was the best potential strategy we had to try and go our own tempo and try and come back. It certainly worked towards Nibali and Sharkwin, but Fulsang, man, certainly a level stronger than the rest. Man took all like an airplane, it's crazy. Either way, I really enjoyed today's race. I hope you did as well. If you did, tap that like button. And if you didn't tell me what's wrong, I'll try and make it better for you next time. I would like to add that I've got the Tour de France team vote open on the community tab of my channel. So check that out if you want to vote on the team that I'm playing with. At the moment, it is looking like the winners of that are going to be Arkea Samsic, but it can still change, so get to voting if you want another team to be selected for my To The France playthrough. Anyway, if you want to see more of these kind of videos, then become a subscriber, and if you want to support the channel, then you can become a channel member. Thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you next time. Goodbye!